Today we're going to talk about military funeral honors, the Navy funeral honors program in particular, and why I believe that every sailor, active duty or reserve, should know what this program is and be able and willing to support a funeral honors detail at least once. And if you like it after that, you can do as many as you like. Let's get into it. Before I get into this, as always, I'm starting all these videos with either a story or a disclaimer or both, but we'll do the disclaimer for right now. Most of the information that I'll be going over in this video is based on my own personal experience as a funeral honors team member for over a year and currently one of two funeral honor coordinators right here at Naval Station Great Lakes. I may cite official government sources to support the points that I make in this video, but at the end of the day, Consider this entertainment or information, infotainment, however you want to look at it. Things may differ from command to command. So verify with your command's funeral honor coordinator if you're interested in supporting this program. All right, let's get into it. First things first, let's define military funeral honors. And I'm reading this from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs National Cemetery Administration. Upon the family's request, Public Law 106 Tax 65 requires that every eligible veteran receive a military funeral honor ceremony to include folding and presenting the United States burial flag and the playing of taps. The law defines a military funeral honors detail as consisting of two or more uniformed military persons with at least one being a member of the veterans parent service of the armed forces. So I won't read the rest of that, but I, as always, I'll provide a link in the description below. Let me just add on to what I just read by saying that funeral honors is a big, big deal, G, like huge. I don't know if service members recognize how big of a deal this is because a lot of times the only ways we're exposed to it is if, of course, if we attend a funeral that has military funeral honors or if we volunteer to do it or are voluntold to do it. And in most cases, when we're voluntold to do something, we don't necessarily have the best experience. But think about it. Why are you being voluntold to support military funeral honors? You're being told to do this if we don't have volunteers because it is a congressionally mandated service that every branch of the military has to support. If you have veterans who have served this country or Navy veterans in this case, and they have passed and their family have went through the proper agencies to request military funeral honors and your command is assigned with this funeral honor detail and they don't fall through they don't show up and pay their final respects that's a problem and it ain't just a problem for the coordinators it ain't just a problem for our leadership it's a problem for that command's triad it's a problem going up the chain to chiefs of staffs and flag officers and all these people that you really don't want to hear from unless they call in to tell you good job. I'm just telling you right now. But on that same note, if your command is doing a great job, like for example, Naval Station Great Lakes, one of the biggest supported funeral honors program in the mid-Atlantic region, covering Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin, then everybody's happy because the families are pleased, the funerals are being covered, the teams are happy, the funeral honor coordinators are looking good, the triad is looking good, the command is looking good, and most importantly, there's no misses. If you get a miss, meaning the Navy said they would show up to pay their final respects and they don't that's a big problem and a lot of people got to answer for that so trust me you don't want to smoke now i hate to sound redundant and whoever's watching this thank you for watching please like share comment and subscribe all that good stuff by the way but this video is specifically geared towards service members especially if you're not familiar with the funeral honors program i want you to know how this works on IN. so basically a navy veteran passes away right the family requests military funeral honors for their loved one through the proper agency and then that assignment goes to regional from regional they will assign the command that's closest to that location so let's say we get a funeral in chicago great lakes is going to get that assignment so a funeral honor coordinator like brown is going to see that and say all right let's see if we can support that i will call and confirm the time date and location that they're expecting the navy honor guards to be present once that information has been verified, I will reach out to my team members that I know that are qualified and available to do funerals. And I'll say, hey, at this point, we're looking for volunteers. In the event that we don't have enough volunteers to support a lot of different funerals, at that time, we will start requesting assistance from different tenant commands and different departments and whatnot. So that's how if you're ever sitting at your desk at the end of a work day, you're like, all right, cool, I got my, all my work done, or maybe not. And then your leadership comes in and say, 
uh, semen phonum. You finna go to Chicago and do a funeral. And you like, what? That's how that happened. We know you never did a funeral before. We know that you may not be interested in doing it. I've heard people say, hey, I work in manpower, bro. I work in travel. I work in uh, medical. I don't do funeral honors. And they're like, yeah, well, you finna do them today. So go get your dress uniform. You finna do this funeral. That's what we call being voluntold to do something. And that's gonna happen in a lot of different ways throughout your military career. In my experience, I kind of had a bit of an advantage by already knowing what military funeral honors was and what it consists of. And this came from attending funeral services for military veterans, as well as watching a bunch of YouTubers who spoke highly of the program before I joined the Navy. Funeral honors detail, you get paid. It's definitely still a benefit to do funeral honors um, if you can, okay? And there's funerals. I highly recommend anybody doing funerals. Once the funeral honor coordinators have put their teams together, and remember, according to instruction, a funeral honor's detail is comprised of a minimum of two members. Here at Great Lakes, we try to send out teams of three. This makes everybody's job easier, and it gives us a bit of assurance in the event that there's like an unforeseeable emergency. We know we still got two members that we can rely on to cover this assignment. But once the teams are put together, the officer in charge or the petty officer in charge of that particular detail will reconfirm the time, date, and location that they're expecting the Navy Honor Guards to be present. You're supposed to show up at least 45 minutes in advance ahead of the service time. Here at Great Lakes, we ask that our members show up an hour ahead of time. That gives you more than enough time to inspect the site, inspect the flag, figure out any logistics with the funeral home or the cemetery staff, practice if you need to, you and your team get y'all plan together before the family arrives. You all, as members of a funeral honors detail, are there to do three things. That is, play taps, salute and fold a flag, and present it to the family. After the rendering of military funeral honors, the team will post off and before they leave the location, they will have a final debrief. They'll talk about what just happened, make sure that the family is pleased with the service, and that's it. I don't think I have to make a training video on how to render military funeral honors. There's already a bunch of great training videos out there, especially on YouTube. The one that I always recommend is the one that's made by Navy Fleet and Family Readiness. It's a bit dated, but all of the procedures are still the same. Make sure you check out that video. It's long, but it'll walk you through the entire process. Now let's get to the part you've all been waiting for. Why would you want to support the funeral honors program? I'm going to give y'all the politically correct PowerPoint presentation answer, and then I'm going to give y'all the real pros and cons based on my experience. The biggest reason that you will want to support your command's funeral honors program is to provide a positive image of the Navy in your local community by paying your final respects to fallen veterans and their families. All right, I know that sounds like a PowerPoint presentation to some, but for those of us who may be patriotic or we see how it really means a lot to the families, that's a big deal. Look at it this way. In that moment, while you are rendering military funeral honors, and y'all should remember this, you are representing the fighting spirit of the Navy and those who have gone before you to defend freedom and democracy around the world. You paying your final respect to the OGs. Someday that's gonna be you. Someday that's gonna be me. If your family requests military funeral honors from the Navy, we wanna know that the Navy is gonna support. They're gonna show up and pay their final respects, right? Let's talk about the incentives when it comes to the funeral honors program because this is where it differs from active duty to reserve. For active duty, remember, you're getting paid salary, so you're always getting paid on the 1st and the 15th. You don't have to worry about a check regardless of how much or how little work you do. So when you do funeral honors, it doesn't count. You don't get paid for it. It counts as a volunteer service. So if you want to volunteer for your evaluations, you want to volunteer for some type of award packet, that will be a service that's available to you, excuse me, a program that's available to you, the funeral honors program. Get your volunteer hours up with that. For reservists, is what we call a volunteer pay program. Again, please verify with your own commands, funeral honor coordinators for more information. But at the time of me making this video for active duty, the funeral honors program is a volunteer service. For the reserves or reservists, this is a volunteer paid program. Now, what does that mean? As a reservist, there's two ways that you would support a funeral honors program, all right? The first way and the most common way is if you do it outside of your drill weekend. And that's why we call it a volunteer paid program. If you are a reservist and you support a funeral honors detail outside of your drill weekend, you will be paid one drill point and one retirement point. And this is also a point towards your good year. In the reserves, you gotta have a good year. I think it's 50 points per year. So yeah, every time you're doing a funeral, that's one point towards that good year. As far as your pay though, you can only get paid 
one drill point per day, regardless of if you do one funeral or 20 funerals. One drill point per day, one retirement point, one point towards your good year. And we also offer a Navy Achievement Medal through Great Lakes. I don't know about other commands, but here at Great Lakes, as a reservist, you can perform 45 funerals within a fiscal year, and that will make you eligible for a Navy Achievement Medal. And each funeral you do is a point towards that. If you're a reservist supporting funeral honors during your drill weekend, we can't pay you for funerals because you're already being paid for your drill weekend and we can't pay you twice if that makes sense. So if you decide to support funeral honors during your drill weekend, you know, when you're supposed to show up to your Navy Reserve Center and drill with your unit, you still will do that and you still can support funeral honors, but you won't be paid a funeral honors pay, only your drill pay. And there's still some perks to doing it during your drill weekend that I'll discuss later. So we're still on the pros of why you will want to support your command's funeral honors program. And we covered that it provides a positive image of the Navy. For active duty, it's a volunteer program. And for reservists, it's a volunteer pay program. It looks good on your evals. And let me speak on that real quick. When it comes to evals or fit reps in an officer's case, but I'm really talking about evals for E3 and below right now, a lot of times lower enlisted we don't really know what to put on a brag sheet for our evaluation. Especially in the reserves, we might say something like, oh, I was in school, I'm taking up this course, I volunteered for this shelter, I saved this animal, whatever the case may be. When it comes to the Navy, quantifiable data is, it looks very good on the eval. So that's numbers, basically. If you do one or two funeral honors, great. Put that in evaluation. If you train somebody on a funeral honor, great. Put that on the evaluation. As you begin to do more, if you decide to do more, keep track of those numbers because it looks better and better over time. I successfully supported X amount of funerals. I trained this amount of people on how to perform military funeral honors and keep building those numbers. The numbers make you look good on the evaluation and you can do that very easily with funeral honors. But the caveat to that is to be consistent. Don't go real hard one quarter and say like, yeah, I did 50 funerals this quarter. And then you just don't do funerals anymore. Um, that might not look so good for you later down the road. I'm not saying do it every day. Do it when you can, but try to stay a little consistent. Another thing that I consider to be a big pro or a big plus when it comes to doing military funeral honors is the networking opportunities. As a member that consistently supports the funeral honors program, it is very possible for you to be teamed with members of all different ranks, all different rates, and if you work in national cemeteries a lot, all the different branches of the military, as well as different veterans organizations. You'll become very familiar with certain funeral homes, certain cemeteries, um, funeral directors, like all different type of personnel that you may or may not even see the value in why it's important or why it's a good thing to know these people. If you are the type of sailor that enjoys being a part of ceremonial events or public affairs events, then funeral honors will be a good foundation to build for yourself if you want to go for those uh, public affairs type events moving forward. For example, as I mentioned in previous videos, for my first annual training, my first AT, I was selected to go support the 59th presidential inauguration as an executive driver, okay? Mind you, I went to support that event as an E2. And when you submit a packet to participate in something like that, they typically only wanna start off with people who have supported events like that before. I've never done a presidential inauguration before. So the master chief who brought me on for that, he said he picked me because one, I was doing funeral honors, so he know I had some type of ceremonial event experience. Two, I have my CDL, I'm a truck driver, so he knows he can rely on me as a driver because I'm not gonna jeopardize my CDL. And three, I'm in my 30s, so I guess there is an element of old man privilege. He's like, yeah, you can do this, sure. Which brings me to my next point, which could be a pro or could be a con, depending on how you wanna look at it. Being assigned to a funeral honors detail can be a highly visible event where you will be dealing with the public on duty and in uniform. I have realized through training a lot of new members that not everybody is comfortable at first with folding the flag in front of a crowd or presenting the speech to the next of can because you look at somebody dead in the eye and reciting a speech and uh, giving your condolences. I know that that can be um, intimidating, not to mention that every funeral is different, every crowd is different. You may do some funerals where everybody's just kind of sitting there watching you do your thing. You might be doing some funerals where emotions are high. Uh, some funerals, it may be small crowds, which is kind of sad because like nobody showed up for this. 
other funerals, it might be a big crowd. It might be VIPs in the crowd. It might be, you might end up on somebody's Snapchat or somebody TikTok. So I don't know if that's a pro or a con. It really depends on how you view the situation. I just want you to be prepared for that. The biggest cons that I hear most people complain about and I haven't had the best experience with is the distance that you may travel and the weather conditions. I could be going anywhere. I could be sending teams anywhere within this tri-state area. And sometimes we may even go out to support smaller um, commands that can't support as many funerals because you know it fluctuates. If you're using a duty vehicle, then that's not gas or wear and tear on your car that you have to worry about. If you do decide to use your POV, again, talk with your own command's funeral honor coordinator. You may be eligible for reimbursement, mileage reimbursement through a local voucher in DTS. Doing funeral honors, I've learned more about this region, about these three states, more about the demographics of these states than any other job that I've done. The weather. I always tell people to prepare for the weather. It's an easy day when it's indoors, in a church, in a chapel, in a mausoleum or something like that. You good. When you're doing funerals graveside or outdoors, you could be anywhere. You could be in the boondocks, you could be in a trap, you could be at a country club, you could be at a cemetery. You can literally render military funeral honors anywhere, so just be prepared. I've invested in a lot of thermal underwear, especially in a region like Chicago or uh, the Great Lakes region. You're always dealing with some type of rain or cold weather, so find out what your motivations are, why you will want to be a part of this program. And if you don't want to be a part of this program and you just want to know what it is, I would highly advise anybody when you just have the downtime, go out and check it out because there may be a time where you're voluntold to do this and you don't want to be that sailor that is sent out there like totally clueless like hey why y'all got me doing something i never done before that probably will happen to you i'm letting you know right now before i wrap this video up i just want to say this and i'm gonna try not to get too preachy but bear with me i want you to go watch a state funeral right this is any funeral service that has been nationally televised for a national public figure or a figure of significance i want you to pay attention to how polished and how flawlessly executed the military funeral honors is for that particular member, all right? Keep in mind, these are a different level of ceremonial guards for these type of services. This is not just the average people that's volunteering in your command. These are sailors and other service members that have been specifically groomed and gone through a whole level of rigorous training that I don't know nothing about just for those type of ceremonial events. Understand that chances are the commands that are providing military funeral honors out in your local communities, they don't have the manpower and honestly, they're not really required to provide that level of military funeral honors. All that being said, I wanna say to you all that's watching what an officer who trained me before he retired said to me, and that is, these people have done great things in society or you know, notable things in society, so they're gonna get their respect and they deserve that respect, right? So when it comes to us as a nation and us as members of the armed forces or in the Navy in particular, the least we can do is send our best of our best from our command to show the highest level of professionalism and the highest military bearing that we can muster to pay our final respects to people in our local communities, you feel me? There's no reason that somebody shouldn't get the highest level of respect that they can get because they came from the middle of nowhere or they came from the countryside or they came from the hood or they came from whatever different walks of life. It's a beautiful thing to be able to go back to these communities and represent the Navy in a positive way and do the best that we can do. If we can look at people on national television getting the highest form of military honor that they can, then the least we can do is send the best of our best and do the best that we can when we provide this service in our local community. I'm paraphrasing the man when he said that, but when he said something to that effect, I felt that. I'm like, hey, that's real talk though. Like, yes sir, like I'm with it, boy, let's do this. What are you talking about? I didn't say it like that, of course. I'm, yes sir, very respectfully, but that's how I felt on the inside. Out of everything I just said in this video, if I could do funeral honors and it's a way that I could pay my final respects to veterans and their families in my local community, I would do that. If I could do funeral honors and it counts towards my volunteer service hours, I would do that. If I could do funeral honors and as a reservist, utilize it as an additional source of income, I would do that. If I could do funeral honors and it's a networking opportunity that opens doors for me for other ceremonial events or public affairs events, I would do that. If I could do funeral honors and it's a way that I can, I don't want to say get out of drill or get out of the office, but essentially that's what you're doing so long as your unit approves it and um, all of your business is taken care of on base, 
Yeah, go do the funeral honor, get you some lunch on the way back, or get you some lunch on the way home. If I could do all of that, then I would do that. But when that man said what he said, it resonated with me. I felt that. So anyway, that's all I got for y'all for today's video. As always, I thank y'all for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll holler at y'all in the next video. Peace.